what to expect as you hit the road for the busiest travel day of the year. In today's cover story, why food banks are in need of more helping hands this holiday season. Plus, Ferguson fallout. What's ahead for business owners in that troubled community? And why consumers are flocking to small farms in search of big birds. First business starts now. You're watching First Business. Financial news, analysis, and today's investment ideas. Good morning, everybody. I'm Angela Miles. It's Wednesday, November 26th. In our first look, the great Thanksgiving getaway. A busy day is ahead for traders today. The market will be closed Thursday and open for just a half session on Friday. Yesterday, the Dow and S&P pulled off of record highs. The Nasdaq rallied three points as Apple crossed a market cap of $700 billion during the session. Gold rose $3 and oil dipped below $74 per barrel. As oil futures drop, it's making for a happy Thanksgiving. Americans hitting the road using unleaded gasoline will be filling up on average for $2.81 per gallon, the lowest price at the pump in at least four years. And Hewlett Packard off key. The PC maker fell short on revenue and failed to impress with its forecast after the bell last night. Shares slumped about 1%. Larry Schover of SFG Alternatives joins us on this Wednesday. Good morning, Larry. And traders have a massive amount of economic data to get through today. What will that holiday trade look like as we go into Thanksgiving? It's hard to say because, like, right now, traders are just waiting to buy some stocks like Macy's or even the outliers like JCPenney's. But there's such mixed messages right now, people just don't know what to do. Traders have many reasons to be giving thanks this year, including a stock called Apple. Yeah, how about that? Yesterday, what a great price move. No one would ever have believed that, even though we know it's got a wonderful uh, corner on the market, a great cash position, and it's stable EPS. It's become a good value stock to people. To add into the mix, OPEC will be talking about oil. How do you even trade that, Larry? Well, you know, yesterday oil went down 2%. I think a lot of people are just squaring positions. I think we need to be patient with that because OPEC's got a lot to talk about, about things like uh, solving civil wars and elections in Nigeria, et cetera. So I think uh, we need to manage our expectations and realize right now that uh, even cutting production a little bit will only support prices. It won't make prices go up. And a lot of that talking will happen on Thanksgiving, a busy yes. time. Thank you. You're welcome. By land and by air, millions of Americans are preparing to take off for the Thanksgiving holiday. Bernie Reno of AccuWeather is here with what to expect. And Bernie, is the nor'easter looking stronger or weaker this morning? Uh, it, it, it's looking pretty much like we thought it was going to look. This storm is not going to be strong enough to shut airports down, but it is going to produce enough precipitation to cause widespread travel delays from Virginia all the way up in the main, and that's travel delays not on the roadway not only on the roadways but at the airports and for many areas this will be the first significant snow of the season amtrak intends to chug through the storm according to the ceo are the airlines ready i don't think that the airports will be shutting down it's not that kind of a storm but it is going to have enough rain and yes yeah, snow that there's going to be lots of delays. So if you're headed out on the airports, I think you do have to be prepared for delays. I think most people will probably get where they're going, but it's going to take quite a bit of time. Thank you, Bernie. The nation is also tracking economic turmoil in Ferguson, Missouri. Chuck Coppola joins me now. Angie, the community of Ferguson, Missouri is reeling from violent protests this week. Businesses are facing damages after protesters lit nearly 25 buildings on fire. Demonstrations erupted following a decision by a grand jury not to indict police officer Darren Wilson. Wilson shot and killed unarmed teenager Michael Brown back in August. Police say this week's protests are the worst since the shooting. President Obama denounced the damage done. So don't take the short-term easy route and just engage in destructive behavior. Take the long-term hard but lasting route. Uh, of working with me and governors and officials to bring about some real change. The community has seen a ripple effect. Time Magazine reports sales at Ferguson area businesses have slowed 80% since the shooting.
Even as some Americans struggle, the U.S. economy is growing at a faster than expected clip. The government upped its third quarter GDP growth rate to 3.9% from an original read of 3.5%. The growth is attributed to stronger consumer and business spending. On the negative side, though, if you look at earnings, earnings overall, hourly earnings were only up about 2%. Total sector wages, the total wages were up 5.2, which is huge, but there's a big disparity here. Upper income is earning a lot of money. Lower income, not so much. Low income wagers are struggling with multiple low paying part time jobs and barely staying alive. And middle class wages are slipping. So there's a big disparity here in terms of wages. So the gross number looks great, but when you dig a little bit further in there, it's a little weaker than we're looking at. The growth rate points to a positive trend. The economy has grown at a rate of more than 3% for four of the past five quarters. In our cover story, there's a turkey shortage. Not so much the supply, but the demand at food banks is higher than at any time in nearly 40 years, according to one member of the clergy. At St. Sabina Catholic Church on Chicago's south side, a thousand people lined up for bags of groceries and free Thanksgiving turkeys. When the food ran out, there were still 200 people waiting. It's worse than I've seen it in my 39 years here. And businesses near St. Sabina have not bounced back enough to donate as they did before. There was a time with businesses where we could easily, you know, call up on a business and ask them if they would help us or they volunteered to help us. Now they're not doing it either. While nationwide unemployment hit 5.8 percent in October, lowest in more than six years, in Chicago's Englewood it's still more than 21 percent. And in nearby Lawndale, 18.5 percent. Two struggling neighborhoods, St. Sabana helps, but not made any easier when supermarket chain Dominic's closed putting people out of work and taking away a source for donations. Even the loss of, let's say, 500 pounds of meat is significant for us. That's absolutely significant, because those five pound, 500 pounds of meat probably could have served another, you know, 20, 30, 40 families. During the Great Recession, people moved out of neighborhoods that lost businesses. Englewood lost 20,000 residents and 3,500 properties sat empty the highest concentration of vacant homes in Chicago. Bringing life back to those communities has been slow. When any business is coming into Chicago, in my mind, we should list the five or six most targeted, highest unemployment neighborhoods and tell them, we'll give you this tax break if you take a certain amount of employees from neighborhoods where the highest unemployment is. The poverty rate among African Americans is now nearly three times what it is among whites. President Obama is back on the border. Yesterday in Chicago, the president spoke to a crowd at a venue created by Polish immigrants and descendants. The president says immigrants are good for the economy and will add $90 billion to GDP. The president roiled Republicans by going it alone on immigration reform. He is making it possible for law-abiding, tax-paying immigrants with family ties to remain in America. President Obama says his order is similar to immigration action by Presidents Reagan and Bush. On Capitol Hill, a Republican idea is being floated to short funding on immigration enforcement. Critical votes on immigration, taxes, and gold in Switzerland will be closely watched by traders. This Sunday, Swiss voters will decide whether to limit immigration to two-tenths of a percent of the total population. The business owners fear it could hamper hiring of skilled workers and weaken relations with the Eurozone. The tax vote is worrisome to wealthy people outside Switzerland who enjoy tax privileges in the country. And a vote on gold could force the central bank to hold 20 percent of its assets in gold and ban it from putting it up for sale. Tuesday, gold futures rose to nearly $1,200 an ounce. Senate Democrats are demanding answers from Takata. The Japanese auto parts supplier has until December 12th to answer a list of questions sent by two U.S. Senators. Senator Jay Rockefeller and Bill Nelson say answers given at last week's Senate hearing were unsatisfactory. Takata's faulty airbags have the potential to explode with too much force in high humidity areas. 14 million vehicles worldwide have been recalled since 2008. Hackers caused Sony Pictures Entertainment to cause to an electronic standstill. A group calling itself Guardians of Peace, or hashtag GOP, is claiming responsibility. A skull appeared on computer screens company-wide with a threatening message that stated private data would be released if undisclosed demands were not met. Sony issued a statement saying it is investigating what it calls an IT matter. Home Depot is facing at least 
44 civil lawsuits following its massive data breach. The stock took a 1% pounding yesterday after revealing the suits. The home improvement retailer disclosed earlier this month that 53 million customer emails were stolen in that cyber attack. Todd Horwitz of Average Joe Options joins us now. Todd, will more investors trim positions in Home Depot? You know, if you take a look at Home Depot, the stock, we know we had the data breach. We know there's some issues. And this would be a perfect time for investors to take some profit off the table. We're just coming off all-time highs. The stock looks absolutely fabulous. But at some point, investors are going to say, you know what, it's time to take a profit. And this could be just the kind of news item that could scare people to want them to get out of the stock and set that go lower. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. A surprise price pop in the housing sector. Despite the overall trend of home prices declining, Case Schiller reported single-family home prices rose 4.8 percent in September, which was more than anticipated. Overall, among the 20 most-watched cities, prices rose in nine, fell in nine, and were unchanged in two. Analysts at Zillow say more homes coming onto the market are starting to reduce the rate at which prices are going up. It's a monster day for economic news all being squeezed in ahead of the holiday, including new home sales, MBA mortgage index, initial unemployment claims and continuing claims, durable goods orders, personal income, personal spending, Chicago PMI, Michigan sentiment, crude inventories, and natural gas inventories. On the earnings calendar, Sea Drill and Deer and Company. Still to come, a new trend in Thanksgiving dinners. And spot on, Budweiser says everyone's favorite Clydesdales aren't going anywhere. Plus, Bye Bye Barbie, the super cool toy that's replacing the classic. Days before the biggest shopping day of the year, Walmart's chief merchandising officer steps down. Walmart's CEO said in a memo that this change would allow him to get closer to the merchandising organization of the chain. The world's largest retailer has been struggling to keep store shelves not just fully stocked, but stocked with merchandise that draws customers to its stores. The frozen frenzy lives on. Now we just have to survive this blizzard! That's no blizzard! Going into the frantic nice flurry of holiday shopping, Elsa, the star of Disney's blockbuster hit Frozen, tops the wish list of little girls. She beats out Barbie. The National Retail Federation says it's the first time in 11 years that Barbie won't be the it doll of the holiday shopping season. The number one boy toy is still Lego. 2014 is shaping up to be the year Britain fully embraces the U.S. tradition of Black Friday shopping. Major retailers such as Amazon have been offering Black Friday deals to UK shoppers for several years. But now, according to analysts, Brits are poised to break spending records this Friday. Visa Europe is expecting $831 million will be spent on its cards alone. Just ahead of Black Friday in the U.S., Tiffany is adding sparkle to the stock market. Shares were gleaming yesterday with a 2.3% gain. The stock is up about 30% in the past year. The luxury retailer fell shy of Wall Street estimates due to weakness in Asia. However, investors chose to focus on the silver lining that sales in the U.S. are trending higher into Christmas. In other earnings news, Campbell Soup shares chilled around $44 as the company reported a better than expected profit. And investors were eating up shares of Cracker Barrel after the company lifted its guidance. The restaurant chain cut expenses and raised menu prices, sending earnings up 25 percent. A shakeup is happening at restaurants, grocery stores, even movie theaters. To curb America's obesity epidemic, the Food and Drug Administration will require all to post calorie counts. It's happening within a year. New rules are being heralded by health experts. The FDA's move, however, is likely to face both legal and political challenges. Critics contend that the rules are too broad and will place undue burdens on businesses. The Clydesdale horses will clomp their way into Super Bowl ads after all. Monday, the Wall Street Journal set off a media whirlwind that the famed horses were kicked out of Budweiser's Super Bowl ads. But now the beer company is adamant the Clydesdales will make an appearance. David Johnson of Strategic Vision believes it's a good decision because there would have been backlash. It's part of Budweiser's entire story. It's part of who they are. And by doing away with those the horses, they're doing away with their brand identity. And of course, they're going to have a backlash because 
It's almost like uh, replacing Coke with new Coke that we sell back in the 1980s. The consumer's not going to buy it. Johnson adds Budweiser's new hip strategy of zombies and Jay-Z could work with millennials. Coming up, a trader looks to the history books as he predicts what might happen with John Deere earnings today. And turkey talk, why homegrown Thanksgivings are in high demand this year. Grow it, we gobble it. A number of Americans this Thanksgiving will feast on food from local farms. Paul Eggers reports from a turkey town in North Carolina. The Asheville tailgate market was started in 1980. Then it was one of just 300 across the U.S. According to World Watch Institute, today shoppers can buy their bok choy at more than 3,000 registered farmers markets. You know where it came from. You know. A lot of times you start knowing the people, actually. The local stuff is also, like, more pesticide and chemical-free. Shoppers still find value even if they may pay more for food that's traveled less. It's a contribution to the local economy, and, and the, the young farmers are out there working. Joe Evans puts in long shifts at his paper crane farm. 13, 14-hour days to supply the Asheville area with a load of crops that can make their way onto a Thanksgiving plate. How much are your butternut? Selling almost exclusively at farmer's markets, Evans has found a loyal following by growing staples and some things that may be new to his customers. Over time, I think people kind of branch out and enjoy experimenting with different foods. Of course, there's nothing new about the big bird that headlines the feast. I will say this is the best year yet for turkey logistics. At Hickory Nut Gap Farm, the pastures are clear of the 400 birds raised on the farm from July. 18.34. They are all now spoken for in the shop. We have a one bird buffer today. <laughs> Thanksgiving then gives a bump in the bottom line for the nearly 100 year old family farm, according to Amy Ager. To have this right at the end of the year is, is really great. More than just a business boost, the holiday offers an opportunity for both farmers to feel pride in their work as they share their harvest with their customers and their family. It brings meaning to food and it brings great conversation to the Thanksgiving table. It feels pretty good to grow, you know, the majority of the holiday feasts that you're eating. Reporting from Western North Carolina, Paul Eggers, First Business News. Americans spend more than $1 billion per year at farmers markets. Still ahead, a trader plows through the charts of Deer & Company ahead of earnings this morning. Chart Talk is next. James Molly of Option Hacker joins us for Chart Talk. Hello, James. You're here to talk about Deer with us. And I noticed that this stock is ramping up into earnings. Can this stock keep on going at that pace? Right, so the underlying trend is relatively bullish going into the earnings report here. However, it's important to look at how Deer normally behaves on earnings day. And if we take a look at how it's traded over the past eight quarters, we see that it's sold off seven times on earnings day with an average move of around 2.5%. Now, this time around, market makers are implying a move of around 2.6%, which is right in line with that historical average. With such bearish action historically on earnings day, it's really hard for me to justify anything but a short position in this stock. Market makers are, are implying a target of right around $85, which would be a move of around uh, uh, $2.60 to the downside here. So that is what I am looking for by Friday's close. Now, we have a shortened week, so I don't have quite as much time for the trade to play out for me. However, I do know that I have a really good risk versus reward setup should it trade at that level. Do lower oil prices play into your trade, James? Not exactly in this deer trade. Uh, they are involved in manufacturing and construction, and oil definitely is an input into that business. However, I don't really think that traders are going to be reading too much into that. They're going to be looking more at what their guidance is going to be telling us and what their revenue projections are going to be telling us about what that industry is going to look like going through the next year. Well, let's take a look at Sea drill then. Earnings also coming up from this company. This is one of those beaten down stocks. 
Right, absolutely. And oil is definitely a much larger factor in this name. And we also see that it has the same type of bearish historical earnings record that Deere has. It's actually sold off six of the past eight quarters. Now, even though these stocks have continued to be beaten down as the price of oil moves lower, I do think that even with the OPEC catalyst on Thursday, it is a very good chance that the stock continues that trend and sells off on earnings. I'm looking for a move lower on earnings, and we'll be looking to get short seed drill based on that bearish historical track record. James, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap for now. Coming up tomorrow, find out if Santa Claus will be coming to town on Wall Street this year. Plus, how film studios hope to reel in big bucks at the box office. From all of us at First Business, we wish you safe travels.